Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the CEA Invite League Grand Finals. We've got a fantastic matchup for you tonight between the defending champions, the University of Akron versus the challengers, Michigan Tech. This one's going to be an absolute barn burn of a matchup. Uh, this is just going to be absolutely great. My name is Jay Wills, and tonight I am joined by the one true spades, Blue Spades. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing fantastic. I'm loving the energy so far. Just like you said, tonight is going to be phenomenal. The grudge match of University of Akron versus Michigan Tech University is iconic. They were uh, the teams that were paired against each other in the winner's final. Akron did beat out MTU and push them down into the loser's bracket, which they pushed the rest of the way through and brought themselves back for some redemption. Tonight is going to be whether or not University of Akron can withstand the barrage that MTU is going to bring towards them or vice versa. MTU really struggled on the second half of their match last time around. So we're going to have to see whether or not they have brought that same level of energy that we've seen all season from them. Again, on the other side of the defending champs, University of Akron are known to be fraggers. You cannot make mistakes with these guys because they will find the chinks in your armor and they will make you pay for it. I think tonight is going to be fantastic. I've got myself my snacks, my bubbly drink, and other miscellaneous items to keep me here the whole time. Eyes peeled. How about you? I I'm, I'm in the exact same spot. I think I think this one is going to be this one is going to be huge. Like you, I, I just downed some tacos, so I'm ready to go. I'm feeling fueled and and good. Uh, you know, talking about these two teams we have in front of us, Akron. Everybody in Collegiate Siege, even outside of Collegiate Siege, working your way up the rung, the ladder of Siege, they know how dominant Akron is. This fall season, across the entire Collegiate Siege ecosystem, Akron has remained completely and utterly undefeated. Nobody has had what it takes to take a match off Akron. They've lost a map here or there. Very few. Michigan Tech have been one of those few teams who have delivered a map loss to the Titans themselves of Akron. And, you know, you, you look at that roster, you look at IMAT, JetCon, Hennessy, these big names in the Siege community, they themselves are, are pursuing greater things than collegiate esports themselves. They actually recently formed a roster, Matt Squared, working with uh, Flonson and Smack um, from other collegiate rosters, working their way up into SCL qualifiers and winning that, in fact. And so... That just proves how good these players are, and they're clearly ready to put up a fight tonight and defend their title. But if you look at Michigan Tech, this is a team that has climbed their way through the rungs of Siege this season. They have put on performance after performance, and it has really only been Akron to deliver them their fatal blows, those blows knocking them down, well, in the case of the Invite League, to the lower bracket. Yes, it's a bit of an underdog story, but it's a story that Michigan Tech absolutely have the ability to win tonight. Yeah, you know, I'm completely with you. It is a David versus Goliath story. But as we all know, rocks hurt regardless who's throwing them. And tonight, again, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you're bringing your school pride because I want to see as many of you as I can in the chat cheering for your team. Bring the hype and let your team know that you're here standing behind them. This is the grand finals. This is it. Akron versus Michigan Tech, and I it's going to be a bloodbath. I was there and present for the end-of-game interview with IMAT for the last one with Akron, and he more or less stated he would have liked to have seen FIU come all the way, but he was more than certain that Michigan Tech would rear its ugly head and come back for more. Let's see whether or not they are hungry enough and found the chinks in their armor and patched them up as we're getting ourselves into the first round first game of this absolute bloodbath and we're already in our banning phase here as we're watching akron picking ace taking them off the board ace is a very well-rounded attacker very decent hard breach amazing weapon seriously good operator even just in the fragging department well, yeah, that's absolutely right. And here in this ban phase, we can expect to see something similar, I mean, to A, some powerful attackers. But let's talk quickly about our maps we have before us tonight, before we go into more detail in this ban phase. Coastline will be our first pick of the night. That is going to be Akron's pick. Second one will be Oregon. That's going to be Michigan Tech's choice. And then our decider will be Villa. Now, I want to talk to you about a couple of things here, Spades. Coastline 
is a map that Akron have dominated on before. Some have no said, doubt. some have said that rule number one of Collegiate Siege when you're facing Akron, do not let them play coastline against you because they will steamroll you and they will do it with a vengeance. But but if you look at the history that these te- these two teams have, Michigan Tech was able to get five rounds when they played on coastline in week number one of the invite league. It was seven to five, Akron taking the W. And then in the winner's bracket finals, they were unable to secure more than three rounds here. So they do have what it takes to get a couple of rounds up on Akron, but it is not easy as Akron have proved time and time again. They took down Purdue on coastline in over in face it. They took down uh, uh, you know several other teams here, powerful teams. Uh, so really they know what they're doing here. But Michigan Tech, map number two of Oregon, it's their pick and it's the pick that they defeated Akron on over in the winner's bracket final. So as we wrap up our band phase here, we got Malusi and Mira and Blackbeard, the three operators to exit the table here, the Blackbeard. I don't mind seeing him gone. I really hate to see him played. It is the man with the shield in front of his face. So that is good to see him gone and seeing that those wub wubs from the Malusi and those black mirrors from the Mira. No real, no real uh, love loss there. No, you're completely right. And what just looking at the defensive side and the attacking side, especially with Malusi being taken off the board, you're going to give a lot of uh, ability to have mobility. Uh, especially when you have guys like IMAT or even Red on the other t- side with MTU. These are uh, individuals who, if given enough space, can really cause some damage. You, Especially as we already see Red picking up the Ash selection on his side of the attack for this one. Uh, it's really going to come down to whether or not MTU plays into the hand of Akron. Akron is a frag-heavy team, and we all know that this map is seriously about dropping bodies wherever and whenever you can find them. Uh, the last time I watched them, yes, there was a very close uh, deciding factor. Both teams seem to almost be stumbling in this map, both of them trying to throw each other off the best they could. Again, this, though, like you've stated, is Akron's powerhouse of a map. This is the one where it is Akron's map to lose. It's all on them. If they play their cards right and lull the other team into their hand, into their strategy... It's, it's very difficult. I don't even know if you can see the light at the end of the tunnel. But if MT plays it proper, keeps Akron on the back foot and keeps them guessing, they do have a chance, albeit a small one, to take this from them. But again, like you said, Akron has doused enemy competition all over collegiate esports in regards to this map and even just with their own skills alone as we're walking to this first one, watching CJ MTU throwing out some drones, just kind of get some information himself. But uh, like again, it's really up to whose team sends the, sends the tempo first. Who starts getting those opening frags and getting that confidence boost behind his team. I, I, I think that that's going to play a big role as well. The momentum, that 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 factor we're going to see play all night in the first frag coming on the board. That's going to be I'm at taking out the aggressing red. No more Ash on the board. But we've been talking about how amazing Akron is, but we would be remiss if we did not mention some of these star Michigan Tech players. I'm going to highlight CJ, Boomer, TK, and Red. Honestly, all of them here, including Chibbles. They have put up incredible numbers this season. And I'm looking at a player like CJ. They have been a fragger, a gunner, and a player to be reckoned with here in the Invite League. They put up incredible numbers all over Collegiate Siege, and I am sure we're going to see something special from CJ tonight. But we're going to have to see a lot from all of these players And I know we will because this one is likely going to go the distance. I think we're in for a back and forth match all night with, of course, that underdog story playing out in front of our very eyes. So a minute 30 left in round number one here. We are on hookah and billiards, the generally the preferred site of Akron here. We are going to see Hennessy looking for some vertical action, maybe, as he watches players work their way in from below. We're not going to have a buck on the board, but we will have IMAT hitting the floor. Chibbles will take down the dangerous and roaming Mozzie and equalize us at 4v4. Yeah, talk about grinding somebody into Chibbles and bits. Well done, Chibbles. Dropping IMAT on that rotate through security. IMAT was the initial individual who took Red down uh, over towards the other side on that kitchen side. I've seen him do this before, and Red knows that that is an area that IMAT likes to roam around in. So Walking in there alone, unsupported, no drone. I think that was a big mistake on his part, but they brought it back. IMAT's been taken off the board. We're down again to a 
neutral standing here. But however, we got CJ dropping JetCon. He's been docked at JetCon 1 as CJ gets that initial kill, giving the advantage to MTU. However, in the last games that we watched with Akron versus MTU, it doesn't matter. But oh my goodness gracious, CJ's making me eat my words as RV is also dropped with a headshot. This is going to get absolutely interesting. Hennessy trading back. We have more on blue stairwell as camera goes down and takes TK. And it's back down to a 2v2. Both teams showing aggressive, reckless abandon, pushing up and getting those kills. CJ being outlined as the fragger, pushing up that blue stairwell. Ten seconds left on the clock. They do not have the time to be wasting here as they got to either get that diffuser down or go for the frags. It looks like Akron is going to bait them into a diffuse. It's going to be a 1v1 if CJ doesn't get this, but the diffuser is on the way getting down. CJ taking a serious amount of damage. I don't know if he's going to be able to hold this up as Hennessy's doing whatever he can to try and get some kills here. He's the last one left. He's done serious damage to CJ, but really it only takes one bullet to drop this one down. And there we go as, as CJ gets dropped by Hennessy. And it looks like, yep, Boomer gave away his position, but he's dropped himself over towards the couch. This might give him the advantage he needs as we're going to get ourselves a... Oh, there we go. We got an air jab, and he gets dropped. Boomer clutching out the round against Hennessy. But that almost turned very negative for MTU as a few uh, scrambling seconds ended up getting a few of their guys dropped near the end of that round. Well done on MTU grabbing the first round on Akron's map. Well, for Michigan Tech, that is a hell of a way to start the night. Taking away a defensive round from Akron on a map they are so talented on. But we got to highlight CJ, the triple kill on the entry from Sunrise. All the way working up Cool Vibe Stairs. Just beautiful stuff there from that MTU attack and the awareness of Boomer to play that one passive, play that one safe in the post-plant situation. Brilliant work from the Nomad. Hennessy has been extremely clutch, has been has numerous 1v4s to his name so far this season, but uh, that time obviously not able to deliver it with Boomer. A beautifully placed air jab and some expert positioning using uh, a nice little foot angle there on the hook of Balcony to deliver the fatal blow to the aggressing Wamai. So that's round number one. That's Michigan Tech getting on the board in a big way early. So we're going to have to see how Akron are going to choose to respond to that attack. That was simply a, a, a brilliant attack. They had early pressure. They struggled with the roam clear initially, but they adapted. They took out IMAT, and then they just used that early pick to just extend that momentum and execute onto that site. So we are going back to the same site twice in a row. This means that Akron clearly, either they felt that they did something wrong or they have something different to bring to the table here. MTU, it worked once, why not try it again? And we're gonna have to see exactly how they choose to bring this attack to this site. Yeah, honestly, I it, it really, like I said before, this is Akron's map to lose. It is going to be on them and the mistakes that they make, and they're going to have to weld patches over top of them to keep MTU from exploiting them. But the one thing I want to highlight out is Akron is known to be the most adaptable team I have ever seen play. When a certain thing works against them one round, it does not a second round. Uh, MTU is really going to have to play on their feet. We're already seeing JetCon switching out with IMAT in that kitchen roam and taking Red down almost in the exact same position. He's really going to have to rethink that strategy because they countered him the entirety of the last game that they played against each other in the winner's bracket. Um, he's really going to have to change that up. Again, I'm at upstairs using those cams uh, from the uh, Valkyrie there just to kind of take a look around, get that information that's needed. MTU, though, playing smart, playing slow, getting the information they need for the pushes. Uh, back to you. Sure, I mean, Red Red has been that early pick both times, and definitely not the way that Red, a big fragger himself, wanted to start the night. You know, you lose the Ash, not only do you lose those flashes, but you lose those three breaching charges. I don't know, did, did those three flashes get taken away in the most recent patch? It's, it's, it's a good chance that they did, um, and it was replaced with a Claymore, possibly. But regardless, that's three breaching charges and a quite a bit of utility taken off the table early on and that can be a problem especially getting down to this 20 second meta that we're going to see evolving here one thing to note that we are on a new patch so there's a lot of new things that we do have coming up in this season as tk will take out the jaeger of jetcon there but we do still have all of our operator bands that did happen before this patch are still in place so no zero no echo no aruni and no tachanka all of those still in there quote unquote quarantine Period. Now, obviously, that word a bit sensitive now, but uh, that is what we call it here in Siege when an operator is still restricted 
from play. So now with 50 seconds to go in this execute, still soon to come without much momentum built quite yet. We are going to see CJ on that double window repel, and we are going to see TK working his way here on Hook a Balcony. Yeah, uh, definitely what I noticed before, and this is something I, I, I talked with Blue Card a fair bit about, and he was actually one of the people that pointed it out first, is when MTU plays with um, unrivaled aggression, it almost seems like Akron seems to buckle a little bit. They're not anticipating a full-out rush. But when they take time like this and drop it down to the last 20 seconds, it really gives Akron the advantage, even though it seems like IMAT just got his brain pan emptied by CJ. They've got 10 seconds left. And there's still four attacking members left and three on the defending side. RV gets dropped down, but Kerma also drops TK. And it's we do have the diffuser being dropped down here. Chibbles grabs the last guy in behind there. He's got one over towards the other bomb site. As we've got Hennessy moving through, trying to clear out those hallways with that AUG. He's going to start pushing towards the bar. He's giving away a lot of audio cues, which kind of gives uh, Chibbles the ability to know when he's coming. However, if Hennessy clears the the... the one corner properly he'll be able to drop one and bring it down to a 1v1 which gives him the time and the energy to get this done uh but he's not going to check it and it looks like chibbles is just going to absolutely destroy him from behind this is a second round in a row by mtu against akron on their chosen map this is um this isn't going the way i expected it to go but this is an improvement on mtu's overall strategy against akron uh akron's really got a find a different way to defend some of their more favored sites here is mtu seems to show a very cool confidence walking into this one so far oh a cool confidence that was i mean cj again with the multiple kills they're really opening up that round for his team it really it really was great to watch and proving that mtu really did their homework i mean it's akron there is countless hours of vod review to do and it's all available at your fingertips you can exactly see you know what strategies akron bring on a map and really all maps and it seems that mtu well they've, they've done their homework and really they've got akron's number at least in these first two rounds and what separates the good from the better from the best in siege is how you adapt to the playstyle of your opponents and that is what exactly we're gonna have to see here from akron clearly they have some they haven't figured out something and how to deal with this mtu attack just yet and we're gonna have to see how they adapt how that igling on their team comes out because that is exactly what makes them so good adapting on the fly learning from their mistakes and figuring out something to get mtu's number and really take the fight to them but right now it's mtu they are on the gas they are ready to go and clearly it's akron on the back foot so far tonight we also have an update. Uh, it looks like somebody in the chat pointed out that the flashes are gone. However, they added an extra ash charge. So she has three ash charges instead of three flashes. I am not 100% sure. And it says Claymore or Breaching Charge has been added as her uh, tactical choices on top of that. Um, I haven't seen that in the game, but that, that is something out there for everyone to take uh, a mental note of when it comes to anybody using the ash player still. Uh, however, going back into this one, uh, just one thing I want to point out is uh, the ac huge improvement by MTU so far. I know it's only two rounds in, but to give you an idea, I think it took almost five rounds from the drop a win on this one, and they were able to get multiple wins after the fact. But if I remember correctly, it did take multiple rounds for MTU to score a round one, and it looks like Red's going to run into Kierman there as he comes around that corner, doesn't realize he's dropped back into square. The two of those might be a point of contention to watch as Chibbles drops Jetcon. That's another one now in their favor. Red was not fragged off the bat this time, playing a lot more smart. He's stopping the rotate through security and allowing his team to fight with every way they want. And Red is just taking down Karama, getting his first kill and getting himself on the board. Well done getting out of that little slump that he was in. I'm at playing that verticality from the top down into that kitchen area, trying to stop anyone from rotating around through blue bar and uh, Sunrise there. My goodness gracious. MTU really holding up their own as Red gets another one as IMAC gets dropped as he just absolutely obliterates the back end of his skull. MTU really showing a commanding lead here. And now in a 2v5, it's going to be Arv and Hennessy once again the last alive. But there goes Hennessy. That's going to be CJ with the blow and CJ with the double and Michigan Tech. Hello, the flawless round coming out for them in round number three what are we seeing right now spades this is this is something this is something pretty special 
I yeah, I mean I uh I'm not gonna lie, I, I, I know the MTU guys personally. They're actually the reason why I became a caster in this league. They found me randomly in an R six game just in a random lobby and I made them laugh. Uh, because let, let's be honest, I can be dumb sometimes, and it's quite funny. But going forward from there, they've always been the type of people who think things through more than 90 different ways. And I think Akron may have gotten a bit of a confidence boost from their initial gathering together on that winner's bracket where Akron really laid into them in a frag-heavy style. And it looks like MTU has really learned from the lumps that Akron gave them. And I mean... Akron gave them everything, all both barrels at the same time, and MTU took that as a learning, um, uh, a learning ability rather than using it as, uh, oh my goodness gracious, we're not going to win. And it looks like they're applying their trade to this, and now it's three nothing against Akron. And this is this is almost unheard of in some cases. I mean, David's been throwing rocks through his sling, and Goliath's eyes have been taken out. He's still alive, but this is uh. This is getting a little interesting, that's for certain. As we're already seeing uh, Akron starting to try to play certain vertical levels and try to make sure that they have different points of contention when you have breaches come through with those attackers, either going through windows or doors. Uh, but MTU really seems to be focused, almost laser-like precision here, as especially with CJ. CJ has done a disgusting amount of work, and at no point would I ever say that it was just because he is a frag-heavy player. Don't get me wrong, the man is talented, but he has had support from almost every player on his team, and it has worked flawlessly so far. I mean, yeah, talk about that flawless round we just saw. We're going to have to see how Akron can adapt to that. We're going to be going back to Kitchen here after that unsuccessful attempt, followed, following, of course, those two unsuccessful billiards and hookah attempts, but... Now we are going to see how this one shakes out. CJ has spotted the Jaeger of Jetcon and is going to start this challenge all alone. Got to be careful about this, though, because no teammates to immediately search for that refrag. So CJ going to back off for now. The drone's going to pour into sight, making a Jetcon is fully aware he's being pressured here from Mud or from Sauna. Here comes a swing, and CJ delivers the blow. Jetcon hits the floor, and now a 4v5 with CJ still on the prowl, still searching for more. And now with IMAT still on that extended roam over here in main lobby, supported by Surma on the Valkyrie, they will be waiting for this push to come through. But this push, it's working right now. And Shibble's now working their way in offices, really just supported by that entire stack. And now we're reaching about a minute 30 to go. This attacking pressure has gained a good amount of traction, has taken out a very big player. And that's another one. IMAT off the board. The, the ash of red just putting up some numbers right now. Yeah, talk about, uh, you know, I was just thinking with CJ, with the amount of frags he's getting, someone should call John Connor because he's uh, terminating everybody. And that's DK also getting on the board. Serma getting dropped with a headshot there. CJ now rotating back upstairs to try and take the ver verticality off. As we're getting flashed, even as uh, the spectators, these guys are able to take out even the observers at this point. As Hennessy is getting shots fired at him, no damage really being traded. But it is just Arv and Hennessy left. As we're getting a lot of damage sent towards Hennessy. Chibs also taking a fair amount of damage, but they can trade that damage as it stands. And Red also getting it. Now he's in a double kill. And Chibs finishing Whoa. up Arv. That's four in a row. That's four in a row. What is going on? Chibs and, wow, Red, everybody. TK, the whole nine yards. They have come to play. <laughs> oh, oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so this, this is a story right now. MTU are taking this fight to Akron, and they're doing it in a huge way. Yes, this map can be considered attacker-sided sometimes, but four rounds on attack, four in a row against Akron, who usually take five rounds minimum on a defense on coastline. This is pure and simple, just astonishing to watch. And I don't know exactly what's not clicking for Akron right now, but but they're just not, the, the, the vibes aren't working. It's just not, it's just not going down right for them. The extended roam is being punished brutally by this beautiful roam clear that MTU are bringing to the table. And uh, it just keeps coming down to either Hennessy, Arv, or both to just survive on site and get this 1v4, 2v4, 2v5 clutch. But that's back-to-back -back rounds where they have been unable to do exactly that. So now we're round number five. Akron here clearly 
they're feeling on the back foot. They're feeling a little bit worried about this because this is not a position they are used to being. This is a team that steamrolls everyone in their path and does it without question. That st steams out to a significant lead early on and while it may dwindle eventually, holds that lead until the end. So now it's Akron on the back foot. They are going to be the ones needing to mount an extreme comeback and they have shown no signs of doing so thus far because MTU are looking dominant, to say the least. Yeah, you know what? One thing I do want to pull out here and just let everybody know, in that winner's bracket, Hennessy on several occasions, I mean multiple rounds in a row, was able to clutch a 4v1, a 4v2 uh, situations. And let's not get this twisted. Akron's team is stacked. These individuals at any point in time can drop a nuke on you whenever they decide they want to or if they warm up enough. I think it's just MTU has kind of pushed them on the back foot and it's kind of causing them a little bit of a problem. Um, I think, though, once they get their footing, MTU has to be very careful not to be overconfident in their fights or when they decide to take certain things or decide to hold certain things because Akron will punish you. Akron is known to do some serious damage. But as we're seeing here, Jetcon has been forced into security. He just got some support from IMAT from up top, coming downstairs, dropping red with that headshot and allowing him to get out. As on the other side, TK, I believe, was trying to push security as well to pinch him in. Chibbles also pushing in there, trying to get through. But it looks like... Uh, Akron has played a bit of a double fake here, getting uh, Jetcon out of there. I'm at being the supporting player in that. Arv looks like he's taking a little bit of damage himself, trying to use that SMG 11, that Sniper 11, if you will, as Chibs now taking down I'm at on the backside stairs with that headshot. Sirma also taking a shot at TK, dropping him. It's a back and forth frag fest. We have got everybody coming to play here. Hennessy dropping chips and CJ also answering in kind. It is a 2v2 situation. We got another one coming up. Arv using that shotgun, but it's not enough to stop CJ as CJ drops Arv on that backside. It is now down to Hennessy, the one on and only, the man with the liquid nitrogen, if you will. He's got to freeze these guys in place and try to hold this out, but there's still a minute left on the board. Oh my god, the anticipation on this one. They have the time, they have the utility, and the drones to tr figure out whereabouts he is and try to plug that hole and win the round out for a fifth in a row. As now Hennessy dropping back towards Billiards, using that rotate hole as a possibility to try and pull off a sneaky-beaky headshot, but it doesn't seem to be working. However, he has taken half of the time off the board for MTU, but MTU doesn't care, as it looks like one of their individuals, a Boomer, pushing in, trying to get that diffuser down. No, it doesn't matter. CJ ends the round, taking Hennessy off the board. My goodness gracious, it's all about alcohol prohibition now, as CJ drops Hennessy for their round win of five in a row. The five piece here from Michigan Tech. This is looking clean, it's looking dominant, and they show no signs of slowing down. I'm trying to figure out exactly where Akron are going wrong here. They're they're playing their normal play style. They're playing that, you know, three-man roam, the super extension on all of these sites. And right now, MTU are penalizing them for it in a in, in a huge way. There really is no way of saying it other than that. I mean, MTU, they've got the roam clear. They're losing a man here or there, but it just doesn't matter. The the refrags are there. They're playing close, they're playing tight, they're playing disciplined. And it's working, and it's working in a dominant fashion. It's 5-0 and on the map that I said starting this starting this night. Rule number one, you don't take Akron to coastline, but but oh my goodness, am, are they making me eat my words or what? So we're going to be heading over to Blue Bar Sunrise Bar, the last-ditch effort of Akron to recover something here on defense. Now... What's so great about this site is that it plays like an entire map as one bomb site. That's what's so unique about this particular site on this particular map. There's no way you can get a plant down in Sunrise without first taking control of Hookah, which means you need to take control of Billiards, Aqua, and maybe VIP first. Same thing goes for Blue Bar. If you want to get a plant there from Offices, you have to take control of Main Lobby, which means you have to clear Kitchen, Offices, Security, and the whole shebang if you want to get that going. So. This is Akron's last hope at securing at least one defensive round. I'm not going to count them completely out on attack because I know they have what it takes. I've seen them play this attacker sided before, but it, it, this is nearly an insurmountable lead, almost an impossible lead to come back from if you're Akron right now, clearly on the back foot against Michigan Tech.
Yeah, no, I completely agree with you. They're making our eat our words here. Both of us were rather confident that Akron was really going to put up a show here and MTU was going to be the ones really trying to counter what Akron was doing. But it seems to be the exact opposite. MTU really showing their strengths and talent here uh, as uh, both as fraggers and as just the ability to play Rainbow Six, that IQ, if you will, that is needed to realize a play and play together and do it properly. Uh, like you said before, Akron has been playing to their strengths that extended roam, but the one thing I've noticed is MTU has been sectioning them off. They almost been playing the kind of the same areas each and every time, and as we're seeing here, Red knew that IMAT was up there, drops him and drops back down. There goes another one of the roams. Like I said, MTU is finding the roam. They know where they're kind of roaming in the section. They cut it off, and they're trying to just completely destroy it and cut off the limbs before they have a chance to get together. Red taking down IMAT, and then on the other side here, Jetcon grabbing Chibbles. But now the frag heavy lord CJ has been dropped down. He's upstairs in that hookah area. He's going to have to be very careful as one of his teammates going to help him up. They do have Arv with that shotgun, but he's not 100% where they are yet. He's looking for maybe a chance to use that 12 gauge to reckless abandon through that floor area but it doesn't seem like it's going to go as red finds another one as serma goes down red is really picked up his game from being fragged twice out cj now also being picked up he drops r but hennessy grabs boomer it is again a back and forth frag game jet con and hennessy being the last two alive yet again here and uh, red coming through that big square area this is they're playing very smart I, I don't know what else to say. Jetcon also grabbing CJ. There goes the Lord and Savior on the other team. Is uh, Now it's down to TK and Red to really close this round out. They have to be very careful. They have to work together as it is still a 2v2, and the clutch is possible. And that it is. It's 2v2. It's not completely out of the woods yet for either team. Here the swing, but it's going to be punished by Red, the triple kill on the round for the Ash. And look at this. It's a 1v2, and it's Hennessy once again. We've seen this every single round, it seems, and he's going to get pinched here by two, but he'll find one. That's TK hitting the floor. He'll have to find one more. He'll swing and do it. Akron will finally take a round with the clutch from Hennessy on the Wamai. Hennessy delivering those kills that he's delivered, those clutch situations that he's done time and time again. And finally tonight, he'll put one on the board. So maybe he's just getting warmed up. But at the half, we look at our scoreboard, and it's CJ and Chibbles popping off, putting up big numbers. 11 and 3, 7 and 3. And on the Akron side of things, it's Hennessy who's put up some numbers of his own, but nothing to match the likes of CJ, who's really just on an absolute tear right now. And so we take a look at where we're standing. We did not think we'd be standing here in middle of coastline, first map in this grand final with MTU at a 5 to 1 lead, Spades. Yeah, you know what? I, I just want to point out, too, Red actually brought back his game, and he was 7-4-2 and four, two in the half. Uh, yeah. <laughs> considering he was completely sat out for two rounds, that's not bad. Um, yeah, I, I'm I'm a little flabbergasted, to be honest with you. I This is their home turf. Akron's uh, bread and butter, if you will. This is their, one of their strongest maps, although I would not ever count them out on almost any map, to be honest with you. Uh, they have the ability, they have the firepower, they have the IQ in behind them, and they have the tactical minds to really punish teams that overlook them. And unfortunately, uh, for them anyways, MTU has not. MTU has done their homework. Michigan Tech really batting down the hatches, getting that homework done and over with, trying to get as much information as they can on certain hard points and positions they're trying to hold as a team. And it's uh, really paid off so far. So far, though, I've noticed a lot of the vertical spots that Akron uses to try and kill uh, entry spots through either doors or windows. Um, so far, MT really hasn't run into them. That first match against them, I don't think they did enough uh, video review. And they ran into probably three or four of them per map. Uh, really putting a, a hurt on either their attack on no matter what map they're really going for here. But yeah, they're really showing a very strong sense of 
camaraderie and confidence here as they're working together as a team. The refrags are there. They are giving no space for Akron to move around, which was a huge boon to their attack and defense on uh, no matter what map they were playing MTU against. Anytime MTU gave them too much map control, they punished them with massive flanks, and they were not watching their flanks 90% of the time. But it seems like uh, the MTU are really buckling down on Akron's ability to roam. And that seems to be a huge turnaround in their game so far. As we've seen already, uh, Michigan Tech leading 5-1 to one at the half. Uh, I, this is going to be an interesting one. I think we just need to watch this play out uh, because if I make any more predictions, they're going to make me eat my words even more. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and we're going to see the roles switched around here a little bit. It's no longer going to be Akron on that roam being so, you know, closed on that vice grip put on that roam, like you said, by Michigan Tech. It's now going to be Michigan Tech on that roam. And with now Akron on that response, trying to pinch these players in. But it's JetCon, the first to fall. I'm at Will secure the trade, taking out TK. And now he will rotate around towards Cool Vibes to support his teammate. Now just waiting for this opportunity, but we have a sneaky vigil. That's Red sneaking up in courtyard, waiting for the opportunity to pounce. There is a nomad, there is a Buck waiting in this area. The Buck has now rotated away, but that's going to be Surma possibly in a dangerous position here as Vigil could be looking to swing this. I don't think Nomad has any idea of Red's position and this swing could be very problematic. Red will take down one. The air jab gets that position known. But that will eventually be answered. Arv and Jetcon both find one each. Now it's a four versus two. Red, the Vigil, finally be taken down. It's going to be up to CJ and Boomer with 40 seconds on the clock to bring this one back for MTU. CJ not wasting any time to get quite aggressive. Peeking out here on Hookup Balcony, but I'm at. Shuts it down. A little bit of damage traded both ways as Jetcon will finally remove Boomer. And there's the double for Jetcon and the end of the round for Akron. They will take round number seven and stay alive in this fight. Yeah, you know what? That was, uh, I think they needed that quick pause just to gather themselves on that half uh, because that seemed like in a completely different team, they were not on the back foot. They didn't care about the scoreline. Uh, they were really coming in hot, using everything that they could, all of the uh, angles to try and cut things out. I really think uh, there was a missed opportunity by Red there to not close that frag out a little bit earlier. He kind of looked like he got flustered. Ran into that air jab, and unfortunately, I believe that is the ultimate reason for his demise. It slowed him down. He wasn't able to get away quick enough. Uh, again, it comes down to timing. If you can't figure out the time in order to peek at a proper spot in order to throw out that extra frag and really put a chink or a monkey wrench in the gears of the machine that is Akron's attack, uh, it's really going to make you pay for it later on. I, I've seen this before. They really have to make sure that they try to be aggressive. But again, it's pick and choose your battles. Because if you don't pick and choose the right battles to fight, uh, they will beat you down in the hardest way possible. We've seen it before. But again, Michigan Tech is still up 5-2 to two against Akron on Akron's home field here for this one. Uh, this was Akron's pick. This is Akron's one of Akron's strongest maps. It is a frag-heavy map. And so far, MTU has brought the textbooks and are schooling them on it however akron is not done yet as i matt runs out <laughs> and he gets cj on a, a run out there on the uh, through the window there and just drops him as a quick shot through that's a really good good uh, quick peek there and getting the kill on as hennessy moving through those double doors into the backside towards blue and security um mtu already down by one and it is one of their heavy fraggers too that's going to put a lot of confidence in the back pocket of akron that it will, and we're going to see how that attack is going to start to unfold, knowing that CJ, that oppressive Jaeger force, is finally taken off the board here. So they are going to be up a man with 2 minutes 15 to play here, just beginning in this round. As the drone army pours out towards 1, it's going to be Red answering back that aggression with some aggression of his own. And that's the Habana now, the hard breach utility off the table. But that's not the end of the world for Akron. It's hard breach on coastline. It's not a necessity. What is a necessity, though, is taking down these roamers. And that's exactly what I'm at will do. Taking down TK, but getting felled himself by some vertical play from the Legion of Boomer. So that's a good start there from MTU, answering that back swiftly and keeping us even here at a three versus three. There's still a very eager and roaming vigil. That's going to be Red, who's over here in main lobby. 
The attackers did, Akron did just spot him, so they are going to be aware of his position, but right now they will be electing to pressure directly onto site and allow Red to move around just a bit more. They will be aware that this flank is possible, though, so they're going to have to have those flank drones in positions, and I, Matt, and Arv have now been relegated to camera duty, watching those for the remainder of the round. Now, here's Akron's traditional aqua take coming through. Surma and Hennessy at the helm of this push. You're going to have Jetcon probably get on that double window repel or get on hook a balcony anytime soon to assist that push. But now with under a minute to go, it's Hennessy key kicking us off as this execute begins with Boomer now taken down. Yeah, Red and Chibbles really got to do something here to try and stop Akron's push and getting that comfortable defensive position for the diffuser because they know how to hold this one to the best of their ability, especially on the angle that they're currently playing in Red. Uh, both of them still downstairs, not able to really defend against this type of push. They now have the ability to use all of the luggage corridor as a way to kill the diffuser uh, or anyone that decides to try and go and disable it for that matter. Red really getting uh, get himself into a bad position as Jetcon takes Chibs down. I guess that must have been a lack of information there as both of them will be dropped by Jetcon. I guess none of them may have even hinted for the fact that one of them was sitting there. I thought somebody saw the Shots going through, especially when Red walked through first, but Jetcon exiting out that round for a third round win for Akron. They are starting to close the gap. It is now just a difference of two. Okay here. So so we're watching Akron potentially mount a little comeback, and, and that is clearly what they're looking on doing here. They are still down two rounds, like you said, Spades, but they are looking to bring this one back and storm back ahead of this dominant MTU team. That's back-to-back -back rounds on attack. The momentum has clearly now swung in their favor. That's three rounds in a row. So we're going to have to see how they continue that pressure and how they continue that aggression that they found recently. That, that opening pick on CJ that we both highlighted, that was huge because it really let IMAT and the rest of the force really start to mount and really have that confidence, like you said, Spades, into getting that attack going. It was a brilliant pre-fire. I don't know if it was actually a spawn peak coming out or simply a pre-fire in that window from Matt, but regardless, it was brilliant play from the top fragger himself. Now, we look at the lineup here coming out from MTU, and we do see a little bit of an unusual pick, and that's going to be Red switching over from the Vigil to the Alibi. Now, an Alibi pick on any map in Siege can be quite hit or miss. You do have either that deployable shield or those impact grenades, and especially because Wamai no longer has that deployable shield, those are even more valuable. And I guess Valkyrie no, alone no longer has that deployable shield either. So those deployable shields have become increasingly valuable utility here, and Red going to be bringing that one on the board for his team. Now, with the holograms, they can be very hit or miss. Like I said, you have to put them in positions that force the attackers to pre-fire those corners, and then you can get a little bit of free information, or maybe you uh, just block some lines of sight or something like that with them, and that's how they can be put to use. But we're going to have to see exactly how Red decides to implement those when we get into round number nine, but all eyes are going to be on this Akron attack and how they can continue this momentum and continue to mount this comeback. Yeah, like I said before, this is Akron's map to lose. They're the ones that have to really buckle down and not make any mistakes. Those last three rounds have been perfect. They've done very well. They put MTU in the back foot. They have really come forward and really brought the fight back to MTU after losing five in a row uh, on that half being five to one there. They need to be flawless going forward. One loss means it's going to go to a tie which means they have to push it all, the way to, it all the way to five and then be able to take that sixth and seventh round for the win if they want the two. Uh, but again, this is their map. This is their home turf, if you will. This is their right to a win, if you will. And it looks like so far they're playing this really, really well on their attacking side. Hennessy walking through security, using those flashes to completely make TK inert on the attack side there. And like we said before, oh my goodness, same spot again. CJ gets, CJ gets dropped through the window. Not a pre-fire this time, but he's got to be very, very careful with that because he is a main pillar for his team as Hennessy really is racking up the death pull here as now he's also dropped red. Akron really doing a serious amount of damage. They have all five guys still on the board, and MTU has been rendered down to the last two Boomer and Chibs to hold out here. Boomer using the Lamai and Chibs with that Meatball Minstroni Maestro. 
He's got to really do a lot of damage with that machine gun. We know it's possible and capable of doing it, but uh, it's going to come down to whether or not these two guys can maybe pull apart some of the attack, but I don't know if that's going to be able to be possible. As we just saw, most of Akron's team is on the kitchen side, getting themselves ready to push through. Uh, it looks about, about three of them. They've got the other one guy roaming somewhere else, and then another guy holding it off. And we just see I'm at walking and dropping chips, and Arv also grappling Boomer. That's a flawless round. They didn't lose a single guy on that attack. They are really starting to show the, the reason why they are the defending champs. Well, this is an interesting match playing out in front of our eyes. I mean, we just saw five in a row from MTU, and we are on track for five in a row from Akron as well. Now, I got to be careful not to put the caster curse on them, of course, but but this is an interesting way that Coastline can play out. This is one of the maps where this can happen sometimes, where you'll have extremely dominant attacking forces where the defenders just can't quite get their feet under them, can't really find that traction and get up that hill that they're going to need to because Coastline is one of those maps that really allows the attackers to shine, especially because Hard Breach is not a requirement. The attacking strategies on this map, well, uh, they're, well, they're more like guidelines than actual rules that you could say. Now, we are going to get into round number 10. Akron looking to continue that streak. And we are going to see IMAT switching over to the Twitch, which is an interesting pick. Yeah, you know what? I, the the guy just has so much ability in his arsenal as a player. Uh, if he needs to frag, he will frag. If he needs to be more of a support role, he will. If he needs to come and get you out of trouble, which we watched with, uh, I believe it was uh, Chibs, TK, and Red uh, had gotten Jetcon stuck in that security spot on their defensive side. I think it was a like ground four or five. Uh, and he came to the rescue to try and just get, alleviate some of that pressure, took Red out, and he was able to get Jut out of the uh, danger zone there of being cut off and fragged out. He just has the ability to pick whatever and really be a boon to his team. I, I've watched, man, the, the weird part is he knows it. He flaunts it almost in confidence as he was talking to us in the interview. He knows what type of player he plays with. He knows what type of player that he is. And he has no doubt in the uh, confidence and ability of those that he surrounds himself in this team. So going forward, you've got to really be careful because even if he picks off of an operator – he still has that deadly efficiency to frag you out. And we've already seen that before. And at, we're now into round 10. We're going to see who picks this one up, either Michigan Tech or Akron. Akron is on a four-round streak right now after giving up a five-round streak to Michigan Tech on the original. IMAT has already gotten some information, found CJ in that Sunrise bar, and it looks like he may or may not be fragged out here as M2 is really uh, – really floundered on their defense. But again, this is one of those maps that can do a serious amount of damage on attack and seem to almost float away like a dead goldfish on the defense. But again, uh, anything is possible. This is in-fight league. These are the two contending. Uh, the one is the defending champs, and the other one's looking to take that title away from them. So anything is possible at this point. Anything is indeed possible here. TK going to be the one pressured right now as Hennessy Going to be looking for that frag, potentially. The drones come out, and they will be fully aware of the position of the Mozzie and have dropped him down to about 5 HP. He's going to start to get pinched here from all sides as we look at where generally our defenders are positioned. We do have four on site, and Red, the sole player upstairs, will deliver the blow, the vertical play, on to IMAT, taking those Twitch drones off the board and out of play. And now in a... Man, disadvantage for Akron. Their attack is going to have to, you know, group up and figure out exactly where they're going to be wanting to approach from here. Hennessy looks like he's going to be eager to come here through this kitchen side door, but obviously that's going to be the Wamaya Boomer ready to shut that one down quick. Chibbles obviously has those evil, evil eyes to his advantage and can use those to figure out exactly where this push is mounting from, but Red, what a shot. Arv gonna get taken down and now a 5v3 in the favor of MTU with Red, the roamer who's yet to be dealt with and really a thorn in the side of this MTU, uh, excuse me, this Akron attack right now. Yeah, you know what? Uh, Akron really has to continue playing to their strengths. They're using those air jabs to try and stop on the, oh, we got ourselves a fake drone throw as he pushes in. Jetcon drops one, but he's also dropped in kind. CJ trying to help his teammate. It's a frag fest, but MTU gets the win as Chibs and CJ drop the last three Kais 
What a rush! Oh my god! Talk about adrenaline to the heart. Somebody stop him, because that was cardiac arrest at the end of that one. <laughs> that it was, and MTU answered back. They stopped the five round, the possible five round streak. They finally won a round, and that one was on Kitchen. So they they have what it takes. They have proven they have what it takes to beat this Akron attack. But Akron have also shown that they know exactly what they're doing, and they can storm in and take you down. And that last round, it was really all on the shoulders of Red. The roam was just too suppressive for Akron to deal with. They didn't deal with it early, whether that was a conscious choice or just simply unaware of the position of the roamer. It penalized them in a big way towards the end of that round. Red was able to find a couple of kills, and that forced the Akron attack to just either waste a minute trying to find the alibi who was so elusive that round or just send it into sight without full intel and full safety of and full flank watch just because they could not you know they did not have the time to waste because the time was ticking away just because uh, red you know had wasted so much of that off the clock so it's going to be match point on akron's map pick in favor of Michigan Tech. We're not going to talk about that much more. We've hammered that point home for sure. That, of course, this is Akron's map pick. So this is a big deal for Michigan Tech. If they can start us off with that 1-0 heading into Oregon, a map that they actually beat Akron on 7-4 in the winner's bracket finals, the most recent times these two teams have met, I mean, that could just simply be huge. Akron are not used to being on the back foot. And going into Oregon, a map that they know Michigan Tech is competent on, it could be trouble. Yeah, you know what? It's it, it comes down to whether or not um, these guys have the mental fortitude to push through. And I'll speak on it myself. They do. I've watched them on that um, on Oregon itself get hammered by MTU and rally to try and make a comeback. Ultimately, they did lose, but they have the basically more or less on that Oregon fight. The last time these two teams got together, the score line shows that MTU won. It was. It looked actually rather like they won by a fair bit, but it doesn't speak the story of how close the game truly was. It came down to a lot of 1v1s and a lot of one opportunity moments that completely changed the entirety of the match itself. And it really comes down to whether or not Akron can completely flush their mind of the negative thoughts and recap, regroup, and get themselves moving again because... If they don't do that, if they don't give themselves that opportunity to make the slate go dry again, it's it's going to really hammer them. As we just see uh, Red outfrag, or sorry, refrag I'm at after he dropped TK in that Sunrise Bar. We do have JetCon. They know where each other is, and JetCon drops him as well. That's two down for MTU. Most of their roam is gone. I'm at, though, is off the gauge. We do have uh, CJ also on that blue bar stairwell. They're going to have to do some serious damage here, but again, wasting down the seconds to making it into a very much against the attack of time if you will as uh, akron has now only four guys left on the board Surma has only got about five health left jetcon a little over half uh this even though they do have the man advantage and that can be huge just a few rounds can drop some serious damage here as it looks like akron is starting to get themselves ready for this push on the site they have almost everybody over towards that A site. I don't, yep, we got the diffuser. It's going down. Boomer and Co. trying to do whatever they can to stop them. Doesn't seem like anything's really working for them at the moment. They do have full health. We do drop one as CJ finds Jetcon on the window. The last two over towards Billiards and Aqua. They do have one drop. Surma also dropping all the way down, trying to watch those bottom uh, windows as well, which CJ did drop, run out through Puka to try and do some damage giving away his position he's trying to bait somebody out someone has to make a move here as time is going down cj trying to drop him through the wall serma grabbing boomer and a headshot cj's got to do something with his teammate they're not doing doing a whole lot at the moment cj also getting dropped arv really doing some serious damage on that one it is now down to a 1v3 and it's not enough as serma grabs the kill on chibs ultimately winning that round for akron and it's now what six to five that it is. It's still match point for MTU, yeah. so they can absolutely still take this match before it even goes to overtime. But that was a swift response from Akron, you know, uh, jumping back on the winning streak train at least. But but that round, if we take a look at it, it really could have gone either way when the plant hit the floor. It was a 3v3 after that kill from CJ, but we saw the retake 
from MTU, and that's what really was lacking there. They had three people up, and in a post-plant situation, you know your attackers are going to start to spread out, get individual positions so they can play, retake, and get those trades. But but what happened there is that Akron was actually in a vulnerable spot where had MTU played trades there, where they, if they had swung together, it would have been hard for those individual players, one at a time, to really make their presence felt and take out those retaking defenders. But that's not what we saw from NTU. They presented Akron with a number of 1v1 gunfights. And unfortunately, that one is what play, that made them pay the price there on that retake. And they were not able to, to, to do that in the post-plant situation. So brilliant work from Akron to make sure to get that diffuser down and get really strong post-plant positioning. Because often we see, we see teams, you know, get the diffuser down. And at that point, they go, okay, we're good. I can just stand around. But really, your post-plant positioning is just as important as your positioning the entire round. So brilliant stuff there from Akron. Um, you know, overall, we've seen some great stuff from MTU on that round. But when it came to that retake in those last few seconds, uh, things just felt a little bit disjointed. And so, obviously, they're going to try to correct that mistake here as we go into what could potentially be the final round of this one. Or could very well be the start to overtime as Akron... Well, they've got the momentum once again, and they're looking to continue that pressure. Yeah, honestly, this was what happened last time. Uh, not to the extent that it is right now, but hesitation is a killer when it comes to this game. And as MTU just found out, like you already pointed out, if they had swung together and they had not wasted any time, they would have had the entirety of Akron's uh, post plant still scrambling to get themselves in line with low health the refrags would have been absolutely in the favor of MTU. However, that isn't what happened. Akron held on, and MTU really, like I said, they hesitated to get that push out. Um, even CJ, it almost looked like they didn't want to push too far forward, and they allowed Serma to get on top of that wall, uh, sorry, the window off of Billiards just after Hennessy had been dropped over there not too long before, previously from that. And, uh, again, that really gave Akron everything they needed to win out that round and bring it one more closer to overtime again. Overtime is all that they can look for and try to get that win uh, that win out through, through that way, as this could potentially be the last round if MTU is able to close this out. However, Jetcon, he, he smells something. He knows something's going on up there, and we did see one of the MTU players kind of just moving around. It's red as Alibi. He just kind of like slowly but surely seems to skirt around his scope and away from any sort of visible range there. He's got to be careful, and the fact that no puts him in a very vulnerable position because if he thinks he can play lax a daisy and decide to try and peek that, he may just get dropped. And as we just saw, I'm at, who got that information from uh, Jetcon, went up top to that roof and dropped red. It's down down to a 4v5. MTU really has to be careful here as they're playing out in the open and getting their feet swung on as TK gets dropped by Serma on that window over in Billiards. It's down to a 3v5. As now it looks like that Akron really showing up, really giving themselves that bona fide position to try and win this, put this into overtime. Um, now we have another one. I'm Matt grabbing CJ with a headshot. The diffuser's now down, and it's all up to Boomer and Chips to try and get this done. As Boomer doing some serious damage, I probably should have just shut my mouth. As we do have I'm Matt sitting on that veranda up top, Jetcon dropping him from kitchen. There goes Chibs. Boomer's the last one. He's only got that um 45. That is not the gun you want to be fighting any AR with at almost any range. And Surma cleans it up for the round win, getting it to 6-6. Six and six. Well, a beautiful attack there from Akron. And what characterized that one was just a decisive push when they saw an opening. They did not wait for the 20-second meta. They saw an opening because no player was positioned in courtyard or lobby giving the opening, despite the soft destruction in blue bar, it allowed them to open up offices and plant in blue bar and just get it down quick. They seized the opportunity, the IGL made the call, and it was a very good call at that. It was a beautiful response to a little bit of a spread out defense. The early pick definitely helped them and helped them spur that attack pressure, but really that, that getting that plant down and making that decisive effort to just get on into sight and get the diffuser on the deck was a brilliant call and a great way to go over to overtime. We're headed to map one overtime. I really think this is a perfect indication, Spades, of what we're going to have to see for the rest of the night. Oh, yeah. No, it's going to be uh, 
it's going to be a slugfest. There's going to be as many refrags as there are players on the map. Uh, it's going to get disgusting because Akron does not want to give up the first point to MTU. If they do that going into MTU's favorite map, they're really going to have to bring some serious IQ plays and some serious frag potential, which they currently do have, uh, to win out that match to just bring it back to even. So if they're able to win this one off and give it an upset, they actually might walk into Oregon with uh, an advantage because look how much MTU has given. Look how well they have played. And to have that stolen away from them in the last few rounds, that's got to hurt. That's got to really de uh, deal a blow to the mentality of the team. They're going to have to bring that together, really show that mental fortitude and rise above it if that ends up being the case. Again, though, on Akron's side of it, if they lose that on their favored map, what type of mental state do you think the team's going to be in? Like, we just gave up the map that we're the strongest at to the uh, contending champions that could be walking in here and taking the title away from them. That's not something they want. So clearly, both teams have a lot riding on this uh, overtime here on this first map, and it's going to really give either, either team, whoever's able to take the win away from this map, the pure advantage going into the second map, regardless of who picked it. I mean, yeah, and because Akron picked it, of course, we saw uh, MTU, they could pick their side on the on the first half. But now in overtime, Akron actually chose the site, chose the side rather, and they chose defense, not knowing that they were only going to find one round on their entire defensive half. So I'd argue that the favor, that the advantage is actually now in the hands of Michigan Tech because they were the ones more successful. I mean, it's just been an attacker sided map and they're going to have more attacking rounds in this overtime half. But of course, Akron have that momentum after getting, you know, five, six rounds out of the last seven rounds. So really they, they have the momentum here. So it's going to be up to this MTU attack to answer back to some of that pressure that we have seen from Akron. And now CJ will be applying some vertical pressure here, assisted by Chibbles on the Habana, trying to get some pressure here onto Hookah itself to make sure there are no anchors able to play in there. We are going to see Hennessy on the Wamai once again, the position we saw him in all the time when they were on the defensive half, at least on the first part of this one. As Surma now getting pressured out here, the Zofia concussion grenade can go coming his way, but the Toxic Babes will be detonated, forcing off that or staving off that push for just a bit longer. Now a minute 15 to go, we still see this extremely extended roam presence from IMAT and Jetcon. This could prove fruitful, but also could be quite an issue if MTU see what they're dealing with and decide to get an execute going onto site. CJ going to take a little bit of damage there. A couple shots coming his way. Not sure exactly who that was. I'm at now taking a fight bottom of luggage stairs, but CJ eventually deciding better off to just rotate away. And now with 50 seconds left, that execute's going to have to come down. Jetcon starting us off big. Boomer down. CJ finds one as well. IMAT will trade that right away. CJ as well will hit the floor. IMAT with two. TK's also down. Now it's Red and Chivals. They've got to do the work. They've got to find four in this situation. But Chivals kicks us off well. He'll take down one. That's Hennessy. Finally taken down before that last situation. So no big clutch from him. CJ the Claymore on the over-aggressing Surma. It's going to keep us even at a 2v2 with 20 seconds left. You know what? He dropped the diffuser downstairs. So now he's got to grab it and run up white stairs. If he goes towards blue, he's going to run right into IMAT, who's waiting. But IMAT decides to turn. Arv does grab him red. But now he's fighting a gunfight for no reason with seconds left. He's completely destroyed his chances to get this down. He's going to be forced as he is getting the diffuser down. But, oh, never mind. The air jab might just give him the time he needs. But no, it's not as Arv walks in and the Sniper 11 finds him from across the room and chips is dropped all oh, the last ditch effort was was there but they just oh if cj hadn't dropped that uh the diffuser downstairs when he was taken down by imat who very much capitalized on it again swinging the corner and taking down tk as well really chopped the knees out from underneath mtu's attack there that has to hurt that has to do some serious damage to the mentality but it's now all up to mtu to try and bring this back on the switch. Oh, man. Oh, my. What a round. What a oh, round. my. What a round. And, and uh, you you got to look at the diffuser situation there as a as a vital mistake. And I, I don't know if it was if CJ had it in his hands the entire time and forgot about it or he picked it off a, off a dead teammate and was trying to get to safety. But that was that was simply a mistake that you that you're going to look back on 
and and think of, oh my goodness, why couldn't we just have given the diffuser to Chibbles, to our hard breach, our support player in that situation? Of course, it's not out of the woods yet. Mi 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 Michigan Tech, excuse me, they can absolutely make this one happen. They know how to defend. They know how to attack. They've done it before, but they're going to have to do really strong here against an aggressive Akron attack. I have no doubt if Akron win this one right now, Michigan Tech are going to look at that last round with a diffuser situation and view it as the vital mistake that turned this map around. Of course, there could have been a way that Akron won that regardless, but it was a 2v4 turned into a 2v2 by beautiful play from MTU, and it is unfortunate that it ended in the way that it did with Chibbles having to rotate all the way down towards main and get the case, and, and that really is unfortunate the way it played out. But we're going to cast our focus now to round number 14 overtime match point in the favor of Akron and Akron not wasting any time to get quite aggressive slowing down this push as much as they can excuse me MTU getting aggressive slowing down this push as much as they can yeah no and you know what even then on top of that Akron are playing like predators here they smell blood and they know that this is the chance and the time to really push forward and grab those extra rounds but they have to be careful as MTU have spikes of their own and they will defend themselves in any way they see fit as uh, both these teams are incredibly capable of dealing it serious amounts of damage, and really uh, any one player can be the turning point, as we just saw that last round. I'm at getting the diffuser down and getting a 2K off of that, dropping TK on the secondary swing. It was a very well thought out uh, play, and he decided to hold it too, because there was only one way for the diffuser to go to get there in time in order to be placed down. And Chibs had to walk past him, really going for that gunfight pushback I'm at. And at the end of that, I'm at, and uh, his teammates just had to bide their time and wait it out. And once it was, uh, Arv walked in with the SMG 11 and uh, dropped Chibs. And that was just the end of the round as Jetcon and Surma down towards that sunrise bar, trying to get some drones out, see if they can find anything. Arv seeing those little pests above the ventilation shaft that comes in the bottom of that area on the back right hand corner. Uh, but it's, again, a very slow game. Lots of people laying down, lots of catching the breath. Must be a little worn out from the amount of impactful plays everyone's been playing. Or maybe they're just a part of the probe gang gang. I don't know yet. As this can, We're down to the last minute of this round on the 14th round. And both teams really not having to do a whole lot. MTU, I think, have been put on the back here a little bit. As Red now uh, taking a little bit of damage, was able to walk away. Akron playing smart, holding their flanks. No one's down yet, and they're now trying to force their way in through that kitchen side attack. They've got the windows. They've got some of the doors open, and TK finds Hennessy's head and empties the brain pan from below. Serma trying to see whether or not he dropped him from, trying to get a little bit of a trade-off here, as also Serma taking a little bit of damage. I'm at dropping down from that second floor into square. I think someone may have heard him. Yeah, it looks like... Someone may or may not have heard him. They're laying down trying to see if they get something. CJ also dropping Surma, but Arvin Imat answering kind, dropping two of their own. It is a 3v3 and there's 12 seconds left. Why is everyone waiting to the last seconds here? But Jetcon is now on the inside of the door. He's getting the diffuser down. TK's got to do something. He could stop him right here. And he does. All he's got to do is run. He doesn't even have to show himself and he wins. And that's it as oh he plays the IQ goodness. play. Oh my goodness gracious. Talk oh about my. the end being so slim wow oh my goodness tk the madman on the mozzie oh my goodness i cannot believe that just happened that is that is hilarious okay so so that one really looked like akron were just about to take match point they got comfortable they put the diffuser on the deck but it didn't get down on the way and the 11th man the clock ran out on them the, the TK there, I mean, I mean, wow. That it, that was simply incredible stuff. And and just the way this match has to go. And just like that, you know what that means? It's round 15 on map number one. We're going the distance. And now it's going to be Akron back on the defense, the side of the coin that they have not enjoyed so far tonight they were obviously able to secure that round just two rounds ago but they're gonna have to do it one more time michigan tech they've secured five attacking rounds looking to continue their attacking dominance and finish this off and take this map away from akron this could be massive 
if they are able to do this. But Akron, they've been in this situation before. They know how high the stakes are right now, and they're ready to play their best. They're not going to let a mistake like that in the last few rounds cost them again. But now, as we finally get into the action phase of round number 15, we're going to see Kitchen and Service as the site of choice for Akron. And they're going to have to defend this with their absolute will here, as MTU are no doubt going to put on a show on attack. Yeah, you know what? Honestly, I think TK needs to rename himself to Harry Houdini because I don't know how he pulled off that magic trick. Uh, he, he got away with that round win, and he's held his team just by playing the smart play. He didn't have to go over for a gunfight. There was seconds left on the clock. He ended up pushing it all the way into round 15. Uh, well done on him, and now again, we're into that overtime match. This is it. This is, this is like you said, the distance, and we're going for speed. As we're watching um, Akron, University of Akron on the defense, uh, Michigan Tech really having a great time on attack. But again, so far, both teams have done very well on attack. This has been in a very aggressively an attacker side match so far. It's I, I even really enjoyed this. This has been the grand finals we were should have had. And this is the grand finals we've been promised. And it is here today. Akron and MTU going the distance all the way. This is, oh my goodness gracious. I'm going to need a bathroom break after this map. That's for certain. I am <laughs> without, I, I, my mind has been blasted more times than Russell Peters could make that joke in a stand-up comedy booth. Uh, <laughs> this has just been great. Is MTU really slowing down their pace now? They have to be careful because so far it has worked, but you don't want to be rolling the dice too many times. You want to give yourself as much time as possible as we do see TK trying to see whether or not anyone's behind that hookah bar. We do have JetCon, and it looks like he had one other teammate. I wasn't there. There we go. I'm at as well up there with him. They're going to be playing together. So that extended roam has now gone from five itty-bitty fingers into a single fist as Red gets the trade off for TK, grabbing JetCon. But I'm at is still up there, and he's playing a cheeky corner. He finds CJ in the back and takes him down using that alibi. Ladies and gentlemen, you can't get him for murder because he is the alibi. As now we're getting a bit more of a gunfight. I'm at getting some shots fired at him. He catches Red out in the open. Red stutter steps and also is dropped. We have another one come up on that trade. And now there, as we've just seen it, Boomer got the trade off. But him and Red are both basically on death's doorstep. Boomer less, just a little bit less than half. Red less than 25% here. And this is not going to be well as Arb, Hennessy, and Surma are all ready to defend the bomb site with everything they've got. It's going to take a lot of effort by MTU to get this round win in, but it doesn't mean it's not possible. There's 12 seconds left on the board. Red is outside kitchen. It's between him and Boomer that need to get this stuff done. As we do see that little audio cue being set up, Arv grabs Boomer's head. There goes a nitro cell, and that'll be the end of it as Akron clears out the round, but only just, and they take it on the 15th round. What a way for MTU to show up here tonight. Of course, yes, Akron took their map, but I don't think we're surprised about that. What was surprising tonight was the seven rounds, the rounds 15 that MTU forced in map number one. This makes me think that MTU are going to take their own map, map number two, and then we're going to go the distance all the way to Villa. But oh my goodness, it is MTU who have come here to play, and it has been an absolute pleasure to watch. We've got so much to talk about, about how these two teams have really just really just shown up. There have been so many back-and-forth moments between these two absolutely stacked rosters, a couple of clutches, a couple of rounds that were not supposed to be won in the fashion that they were, but we're going to save that for just after the break. We're going to come back in just a few minutes and we're going to have map number two of Oregon coming up in just a moment. Stick with us.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Thank you for sticking with us once again. My name is Jay's Wills. I am joined by the one true spades and a wonderful observer today is, of course, Cal Ricks, giving us, delivering us that amazing action between Akron and Michigan Tech. Well, spades, map number one, that was something. <laughs> oh, my God. I, I, I still, I, like both teams. Like they're they're here to play. MTU grabbing the first five rounds, going five and one at the half. Akron bringing it all the way back and winning it out in round fifteen, no less. What I I like I said that I don't have thoughts at the moment. My mind is gone. My blood pressure's through the roof. And oh my goodness gracious, this game is still going. We're in map two in Oregon, and I believe yep, Akron is going to be on defense. MTU is on the attack on the first starting rounds here. That first map, man, that was nuts. I, I Do you have any thoughts on it? Because honestly, I'm still trying to collect myself. Yeah, sure. I mean, what, what we saw was just incredible play from both teams. But really, both teams sent a message. They carried the momentum. It was five rounds in a row from Michigan Tech on attack. And then it was four rounds in a row from Akron on attack. Went back and forth a little bit to close us out in overtime. But you really think about exactly what both of these teams brought out. And I think... Michigan Tech brought a beautiful counter to the play style of Akron on defense. Akron like to just flex their gunners because they have so many on their roster and they play an extremely uh, you know, extended roam with three or more roamers off of site, leaving only two Arv and Hennessy on site. But Michigan Tech, they did their homework. They knew what they were getting into tonight and they dealt with it swiftly. And when it came down to the wire after the beautiful roam clear, it was just simply the execute of five or a four versus two was all they needed to do on attack. And it, it was really quite simple. And on the other side of the coin, you look at Akron and how they responded on their attacking side. It was very similar. They dealt with the first roamer, the second roamer, and they just made those executes onto the site. I think it was characterized by just Akron seizing the opportunities that Michigan Tech gave them here or there. They didn't wait for the 22nd minutes to come uh, to fruition. They just went all out and made a decisive execute when they saw an opening and that's what that's what Akron can do that that's what the powerhouse team that they are will do to you if you give them just a little bit of a crack in the door well they will slam themselves into it and burst on in I think that is what they did so well on their attacking side but you talk about the performance of MTU because I think that is overall the big takeaway from map one that MTU they came here to play tonight they came to prove that they are up there with the best of the best, that they can take the fight to the titans themselves of Akron, the collegiate legends that they are, and MTU are starting to make a name for themselves and really, uh, you know, earn their spot here at the top. Yeah, you know what? Like, <clears throat> even those first initial rounds that MTU strung together, that five-piece that they walked away with uh, at the half, especially the half, I think both of us were very thrown back, and I think a lot of people in the audience were too. How confident, how collected, how cool MTU was able to really string together as A, a team, and as B, individuals. Even with losing red in the first two rounds, almost instantaneously with no damage done, uh, as a four-man team, they were able to continue ad to adapt and overcome when it came to Akron's strategy. That's the team that has done their homework they know each other's roles they know how to flip around if necessary when they lose guys and they can work together uh, together well it's all about communication and that was on uh, absolute display with mtu's team uh how they were able to react with each other on that attacking side again akron that mental fortitude really showed forward at the uh, second half of that map as they were able to string their rounds together, together and ultimately winning out the game. But again, oh my goodness gracious, CJ's already on a start grabbing IMAT off of some sneaky beaky stuff through, I think, a window. I don't even know where he got hit. But CJ was out the front, not sure where he shot IMAT from, but there's one off the board already. And JetCon looks like he wanted to uh, try his luck, and CJ almost dropped him too. I mean, this is a good a good start from from Michigan Tech as any the similar you know force that they came out with on coastline. But we got to quickly touch on exactly what happened the last time these teams were here. It was Michigan Tech who picked Oregon once again, and they ended up beating Akron in the winners bracket finals seven to four on this map. So 
that proves right there that Michigan Tech have what it takes to beat Akron on this map. And so I think now, with that performance they put on Coastline, the best one that they've put up against Akron, that any team has put up against Akron this entire fall season, I think that Akron now really have to find something and get something going to win this map. Because this one, this is Michigan Tech's strong map. It's their powerhouse of a map. And they are looking to continue that momentum and continue to shut down Akron at every turn. Akron know that Michigan Tech are here to play, that they've done their homework. So these boys are going to be buckling down and sweating this one out for sure. Yeah, and if I remember correctly, I, I'm not 100% sure. But from my own notes here, I'm not, again, I'm not 100% sure. But I believe Akron got four rounds to start with on this map. And then we're 7 0 afterwards in the continuous rounds after that by MTU. Uh, very much led by CJ and that frag heavy ability that he brings forward. Uh, I'm at meeting his end and now CJ also gone. He's going to have to rely a little bit more on his teammates here to get these extra frags and pull out the win for his team as we're now seeing a little bit of a breakdown on the attack. We do have, like I said, CJ has been dropped. TK is taking a little bit of damage. We are now getting into the final minute of the round here. And uh, again, it's MTU this is their map. They have to make sure that whatever they decide to execute, it is on beat and together because Akron will punish you with whatever and anything that they've got the ability to do with. Hell, if they got to pick up a rubber mallet and beat you with it, they will. Well, that they will. And now with 30 seconds to go, this execute still nowhere to be seen quite yet. We are going to see Red now swinging up all the way in laundry. TK delivering the shot onto Surma, but that one's going to be immediately answered back by Jetcon. Now a 3v3 Chibbles working their way up into Freezer. This is one is going to be a south side take, a laundry and Freezer crossfire here establishing soon. Hennessy looking to contest this. That's going to be the long angle, the beautiful shot there on a Chibbles. Chibbles now hits the floor and now a 3v2 and there it goes, the cleanup from Akron. Arv and Hennessy delivering those final kills on a Boomer in red there and Akron will take round number one. Yeah, talk about looking for the wine cellar and finding nothing but the Hennessy jars in the back as Hennessy was sitting in that corner next to the washer dryer and ultimately decimates Red as he just was not looking into the proper corners there. Uh, Hennessy using that long uh, that long takeaway to try and get a couple extra refrags and try to stop MTU from coming into sight. Uh, MTU crumbled on that, unfortunately. Their attack really did not hold up the snuff. It looked like very promising at the very beginning of that round. CJ grabbing IMAT right off the bat, nearly grabbing JetCon. If he had fragged JetCon out, I think that match would have gone a little bit differently. Unfortunately, it didn't, and he was a decisive linchpin on that uh, end part for the defense, and Akron grabs that first round. Well done on them. Yeah, we saw Hennessy there on the role of the of the Goyo. That is a role we are accustomed to seeing Hennessy play on. He's gotten numerous clutches in this role on the basement site itself. Actually, I've casted one of those one of those one v four clutches that Hennessy can bring to the table so often, and that really is is in, in indicative of the meta we're seeing now. Bringing that Goyo and that deployable those two Vulcan shields he brings to the table. The basement of Oregon is pretty much considered deployable shield central, right? You have every possible deployable shield you can bring, and you'll put one down. You'll put one in pillars. You'll put one on the pillars to construction door. You'll put one in J bunker holding that elbow position. All of these very strong positions with deployable shields, and that is exactly why that Goyo is an operator we can expect to see almost every time we go to the basement. But now we're going to be transitioning sites after that good win from Akron and heading over to kids and dorms. And now we are taking a look at this lineup. Hennessy switching over to the Wamai, bringing those Wamai magnets, those Wamai pancakes, whatever you want to call them, they will be on the table. Of course, Wamai having received that slight nerf, no longer getting five of those magnets for the entire round, only generating about four by the end of the round. Yeah, you know what? He and Jaeger before the Jaeger uh, debuff with the... Uh, with uh, the ADS, especially when you have to rotate them around, as, as sometimes you're going to have to do, especially with the new patch, uh, there was a very strong counter to utility-heavy teams. I mean, come on, you can pull literally anything and everything with his magnets. Uh, the ADS is a grab. All the grenades known to man. You can really run down a utility-heavy team just with that alone. And I think that, with especially with that type of gameplay, uh, that really steered teams towards having as much utility as possible 
to uh, out use those types of uh, those types of gadgets as we just see Red taking down Jetcon on the roam, but I am at answering in kind, grabbing CJ. It looks like these two are going to be trading frags back and forth throughout the next couple a few rounds here as Iamat is setting himself up to try to take out anyone that tries to counter him on the stairwell. However, he is quite stuck in the tower. Not only that, he did get sussed out by the Jackal tracking. The, the uh, footprints were spotted and scanned, so the attacker's now fully aware of this position and now know that he is still likely trapped up there. They'll set a drone in that position, and TK will use a little bit of soft destruction to assist that flank wash. Now, Surma We'll keep it spicy. We'll take the head of Red, removing the Jackal from play. No more of that nonsense, that Jackal scanning coming down in this particular round as we near a minute 15 to go. Now the man advantage once again in the hands of Akron here. Still, this attacking pressure has made quite a bit of progress. TK now focusing, no longer taking too much time over on IMAT over in T3. Now going to redirect that focus over to the site itself. And now with Hennessy positioned in kids, Arv gonna take a little bit of damage from below. The SMG-11 in hand now running around to try to find something that he can, but nothing will bear fruit right now. Boomer now opening up the master door to get this closet wall open. Actually gonna pay the price a little bit for that. 25 HP off the table, and now with 30 seconds to go, this attack is gonna have to find exactly where this take is gonna come down. Yeah, they've really got themselves in a bad position here because now IMAT has rotated outside of that tower and he is disgusting on the flank. If you give him, like I said before, if you give them too much room, they will do damage as we're seeing IMAT using that vertical hole to fire upwards and taking down two of the MTU crew and Hennessy grabbing that last headshot on TK, ending any and all hopes for the end of that round. Yeah. Well, there we go again. IMAT really showing when you give somebody who has the strength of the flank, if you will, and you allow them to roam unchecked, they are going to nip you in the butt. That they will, and that they did. You called it perfectly mid-round. IMAT on the flank is going to be strong, and in that exact moment, he found a double kill from the attackers entering in the double window there. So we're going to see... MTU are going to need to find a response. I'm worried that they're going to be a bit demoralized after being five rounds up and letting Akron, you know, kick in the door and storm back in, you know, arms open wide, ready to get that dinner here. But but we're looking at Oregon, and right now, this is not what I expected, actually. I thought MTU would come out swinging. I mean, yes, this is a defensive-sided map, and the team that picks the map is generally extremely strong on defense, Attackers less so on attack. But MTU are going to need to pick up a round or two at least if they want to stay in this fight. They're going to have to keep in the game, at least secure that 4-2 to two split, winning these tertiary bomb sites to keep themselves in play. We are going to see the tertiary bomb site of kitchen and dining in play in this particular round. There is a debate generally in the Siege community. Is kitchen and dining the tertiary site or is kitchen and meeting the tertiary site? I think we're seeing a little bit of a shift in the meta preferring dining because of the shower's power position that we are going to see Akron now setting up with that one hard wall coupled with a little bit of soft destruction. He said a couple of ADSs, a maestro behind a shield in there, and that is a very strong position to hold. Of course, the Jaeger nerf, though, that may change things around a little bit and allow this position to be pushed out a bit earlier, but only time will tell as the attack round gets underway. Yeah, you know, it's it's really going to be up to, like I said before, and we've talked about it before, that mental fortitude. When you've got a few strong losses together, whether or not you and your team can pull yourself out of that funk and give yourself a winning position, uh, especially losing a few rounds in a row. Now, by no means is this map over, not even a long shot. Akron's picked up two, and it's very good for them, but this is MTU's pick. And just like that last match where we watched MTU uh, pull five rounds in a row at the very beginning. Uh, eventually, even though it pushed all the way to overtime, Akron was able to beat them out, but by no means was it not a slog. It was everything had to be put on the line. Everyone had to display the peak efficiency that we are expecting from here. And as we all have just seen there, there goes one as TK does grab one out, but he gets refried as R finds TK with that 12 gauge through the ceiling. Uh, that's going to be a, a decent one here. We do have another one that's kind of hurt. Chibs lost a hell of a lot of HP there. 
getting uh, his feet schwacked with those pellets, grabbing down below 25 there. As we do have another one, I am at roaming, using that alibi to do damage wherever he goes, grabbing red. That's another heavy frag off the board. It's now down to CJ, Boomer, and Chibs. And uh, slow and surely, it's starting to seem like their attacking potential is dwindling. It is dwindling just a little bit. Of course, this round here is not quite over, but not only do they not have the time on their side, but the diffuser is out of pocket right now, dropped in the hallway. We do have that extended roam coming out from IMAT and T3 once again. Surma takes a bit of damage there. Looking for exactly where that came from. Boomer now working his way up here, bottom of white stairs, trying to get this crossfire established over onto the dining room. But that, of course, is going to be easier said than done as we get under a minute left in this round. Now, now they're just desperately searching for this roamer. That's IMAT who just darted around into the basement. So that's something to be concerned about on the flank watch. Now, MTU are stuck really, really badly here between a rock and a hard place. Chibbles finds one, though. Hennessy going to fall, but I'm at on the flank. He'll miss all of his shots, unfortunately, for him. And now he'll have to find something before he gets pushed out himself. He'll swing the angle, and CJ wasn't ready. And now Boomer's going to search for the refrag, and he will find it with a nice pre-fire. Now under 25 seconds to go, this execute needs to come through. But the showers player, that Surma, low HP, but he's got that Alda in hand. More than enough bullets to do the job. There it goes. He'll find one. He'll swing looking for two, but denied by Boomer. And now Boomer only has to find one more, but only 10 seconds on the clock. The diffuser in hand. He's going to look to get these down. The toxic babes will not only block this angle, but will be delaying this time a little bit. Boomer's going to have to search the fragger, go for the plant. He'll get it down on the ground just in time. But Arv is going to have ample time to come up there and secure the frag. MTU opting to get off that diffuser rather than bolstering Arv's KD there. And Akron will take the tertiary bomb site. A clean rotation. One, two, three. Yeah, talk about anybody who knows how to play Maestro uh, with that Alda. Because literally the joke you can make is I have all the bullets in the world and you can't stop me. That box magazine can keep on chugging and keep on going. And it can really put a wrench into any attacking player's... Uh, whole plan and as we just saw there even the small amount of time that he had to go in there and hold off the attack was just enough so that way the diffuser had to go down at the end round limit allowing arv to just walk over present any sort of resistance and at the end dropped off of the uh, diffuser giving akron the win uh they have now strung three together that momentum is starting to build this is how the last map started out both teams seem to be here trying to just pick on the other team's preferred map. And it doesn't seem to be ending so far. Yeah, yeah that's a pretty spot on point there, actually. it's Michigan Tech could very well mount the same comeback that we saw Akron do in map number one. It is their map pick, of course. They know how to defend it. But apparently, so do Akron. That's three rounds in a row, tertiary bombsite included. And that means they really, they really proved that no matter what MTU throws at them, they can deal with it right now. And that is concerning if you're Michigan Tech, especially early on in your map pick. Because if you look at just the way these rounds have played out, Michigan Tech secured the majority of those rounds at the very beginning of this night. You could argue that Akron weren't warmed up yet. You could argue that Akron, maybe they were muted in their Discord or something. But whatever it was, they have come back here and they have really changed up their, their play style and and really just, really just gotten it together. The coordination is there. The the decisions are made quick. They're made decisively, and it's just working for them right now. So Michigan Tech haven't won more than one round in a while. They haven't chained a couple together. So they are definitely on the back foot here, looking to find some traction and regain that early speed they had in map one. Yeah, MTU's really, even just a couple lucky bounces to go in their way, just to give them what they need in order to really allow them the chance and the opportunity to just string a few kills together to give them that advantage. The one, I'm going to say, the one factor that has really been a thorn in their side is Imat and his flanks. So far, he has been the contributing thorn in the side. And oh, Red annihilates CJ with a TK. Oh, my goodness gracious. Talk about wrong place, wrong time, wrong brain panda empty as Red drops one of their heavy fraggers. Oh, he hasn't really put much up on the board. We know what he's capable of, and that's a lot of potential off the board. Oh, man, that's bad. 
That's not the way you want to start here if you're MTU with this attack now. Really just deciding to send it all into J Bunker. Not really opting for a multi-pronged approach, but it's not going to matter if you're the head of Surma. Just getting absolutely obliterated by the DMR there of Red. He'll get the 2k on the round himself for Red after securing that earlier team kill and keeping us even at a 4 versus 4. And now with full pillars control now, they're going to open this pony wall, forcing that smoke out of that position. Arv will release some of those toxic babes trying to remove himself from that dangerous spot. Pony wall now open. Jetcon finds one, though. Chibbles now cut down as Jetcon works a little bit of a flank here. The flank watch, the roam clear, is not really going down for MTU. It's simply a full sight execute, and right now Akron have penalized it. Yeah, there we go. As Jetcon released the Dogs of War, him and I, Matt, are going back and forth, dropping MTU players left, right, and center. TK, the last man standing, is found by IMAT. And uh, right through the nasal cavity, he dropped him like Agent 47 in that one movie we won't talk about. But wow, that's... It almost seemed like everything was rolling in MTU's favor. They really got themselves together. Unfortunately, Red dropped one of their top frags. He was able to trade it out, getting Surma also with that one, but it just wasn't enough. As that basement, even though there have been changes to that map, is still a very formidable site as Akron is now showcasing that ability. Yeah, the it's really it's really clicking now for Akron. Whatever whatever qualms they had with each other in map number one, they have thrown them to the wayside and have come here to play on Oregon. It seems that Akron have done their homework on Oregon just like MTU did on Coastline. And it's not working out too well for MTU right now. They're going to need to find at least two rounds here, like I said. Otherwise, this one is going to be tough for them. They're going to have to secure many rounds back to back on their defensive side. I'm going to, I'm not going to count them out. Of course, I know they can do it because we've seen how strong they can be. Not to, to mention, this is, of course, defensive sided, like most maps are in Siege. But you got to think of the mental state of these players. No doubt this will be wearing on them. They haven't found a couple rounds in a long time. Akron are putting on the pressure and MTU are going to need to find a way to regroup, recover, and try to get a mental reset here to get their rounds starting to accumulate. Yeah, no, I completely agree with you here. It is uh, it is definitely a factor, the mental state of any player, no matter who you are, no matter how hard your ability is to frag and to do some serious damage. If the dice rolls aren't going in your favor and it's just not working out for you, that can weigh severely, severely heavily on your team, on you, especially when you are supposed to be bringing forth some serious damage and it's just the output is just not there. Uh, it can really hinder your team synergy. So uh, really all they've got to do, take a breath, step back for a second, give themselves a second and, uh, you know, bring it back. Bring it back with a renewed mindset and stop trying to overanalyze yourself realize where you're making those mistakes and then try to correct them that's all you really can do however as it stands right now it seems like oh my goodness akron is on a roll cj playing as that ash gets dropped she's down but not out but that's going to put some serious damage on uh, the ability of cj to continue on as ash we know that we, everyone jokes that she doesn't have a head hitbox, but she does have a body hitbox, and that's all it's going to take is a few rounds to drop them. As did see IMAT moving around to try to be – maybe I was thinking he was going to go up top and try to jump out and get the double kill with uh, CJ down, but he's opted to play a little bit more smart. Uh, I can't critique him at all because so far, when given the opportunity to flank, he has done some serious damage as we now do see him roaming downstairs towards that freezer area area out to the main uh, corridor to those bomb sites downstairs so that going forward he is definitely somebody we're going to want to watch that he is he has put up numbers tonight and is continuing to do so with these impressive flanks this impressive roam game on this first half now attic has been successfully opened in the first step in establishing this crossfire onto the games room that is so essential in getting a plant down on the site but CJ now mounting this pressure on the master side as well, as the flashes will now come down the way. But I'm at on the flank. He finds one chibbles. That is the uh, Habana now off the table. Now with a minute to go, CJ and Boomer are all alone here in trophy. Red will find one taking down I'm at the AUG. That's going to do its job there. The C4 not finding anybody. 
Still a 4v4 now with 50 seconds to go. Jetcon also in a position to work a flank. Arv now, oh, the swing and the crouch peak there from CJ. That's too much for Arv and the dinky little SMG 11. So now it's a 4v3 in the favor of Michigan Tech. But Hennessy, Hennessy equalizes in a big way. But CJ just storms on into sight, finds one, finds two. That's a triple kill for him. And now Boomer's on the deck, so it's essentially a 1v1. He's going for the res, but the Z pings come out. They know exactly where the position. Jack caught on the swing, but it's CJ with the 4K and the round win for Michigan Tech, keeping them in this fight. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, like, um, that was disgusting. That was, that was absolutely disgusting. That was very well played, but wow, did that ever come down to the wire? And again, CJ really displaying his prowess when it comes to frag. I mean, I, I almost in the back of my mind canceled him. It was like, yeah, I don't know if MTU is going to grab this round. Maybe next round, their health pool as a whole was very depleted. But it uh, didn't matter as CJ just kept swinging and the haymakers rolling out and knocking everybody that got in his way. Hennessy almost cut the legs out from underneath it, but he sweep kicked him Attack as he came around the corner, went back, picked up his thermite, and still swung on the last one. I think it was Jetcon in that attic position. He said those Z-pings were out and ready to go. And boy, did he ever pre-fire and he was ready and he dropped them with reckless abandon. But just think, all, all, all he had to do was spit on CJ and he would have dropped. So with that being said, CJ did not miss and he completely uh, took everyone by surprise. That is the ability of CJ and this MTU team. They have the ability to just take a almost certain position and light it all on fire and laugh as they do so. Wow. The arson charges, I swear to God. Yeah, I mean, CJ was just tired of, of waiting, just tired of the coordination from his team decided it's time I put this team on my back and storm in there and just do all the work myself. And well, that worked for him. The 4K on the round. He hasn't found a lot of traction here so far on Oregon, but that round will take him over to five kills. Now the top frag on his team. And now CJ not wasting any time to continue that. Arv caught completely off guard the rush from CJ. It worked out huge. And that's a good start. They may continue that pressure or very well could back off here. It appears that they may slow things down just a little bit to get a bit more intel just using that opening pick to gain that footing. But what a start in round number six. You know what? One thing I want to highlight here is I think they've had enough of the flank. I don't know if you noticed, but Red is sitting outside next to that white van watching the front door, stopping the IMAT and JetCon flank from getting through. He is literally the concrete wall between Red. Like, just this is this is completely cutting off their rotate. Although they still have the ability to do some serious damage by Red sitting there and letting his team work and holding off their backside, they can completely focus on everything in front of them. And taking off that mental stress of everything coming up from behind you, I can tell you, is a massive relief for your fraggers. And here we go as IMAC gets taken down by CJ, and CJ is making a run of it. That's another one for him so far. He's brought himself up to 7-4. and four. We were talking about him not even being on the board, and CJ is absolutely hungry. He smells blood in the water. My goodness gracious. This man must be akin to sharks because he's smelling everyone from everywhere. And there goes another one. And we're down to 5v2 on this round. Well, that is that is a way to kick this round off. Round number six going heavily in the favor of Michigan Tech right now. It's the clutch man himself, though. That's Hennessy still on the board. He'll look for one and he will find it. That's Boomer on the floor. He'll swing to find two. But that will be denied by the IQ of Red. It's going to be all up to Surma. He's got the AUG in hand. He's got the work. And he knows exactly what he needs to do here. But he has to find four. The prone CJ is going to get absolutely denied. And now he's got to only find three more. The push from Attic is coming. And it is too much for Surma to handle. Michigan Tech will take round number six. And the entire Oregon map and the way this was playing out just completely changed. Because now... The two rounds in the bag for Michigan Tech, they absolutely are exactly where they need to be to storm ahead on defense and possibly take this map. You know what? Honestly, I think they need to change Chibbles' uh, profession to chef because he just served up some chibbles and bits at the end of that round. That was very well played, and that, I think that really shows the mental fortitude for MTU to 
put the line in the sand and say, listen, you're not getting past this. I don't care how many times you've beaten us so far. You're not, don't step over that line. And each, every one of them tries to stick a toe over that. Something gets cut off and it's, it's almost like they're pulling them apart one by one. CJ with that, at the very beginning, that reckless push in that aggressive stance that he took caught Arv completely off guard, taking him off the board. We did have Hennessy come around the corner on the backside, try to swing and get some kills, but Red got the refrag and stopped him in his tracks. Then CJ gets dropped when he was prone getting through the other side. He also being refragged by Chibbles on that uh, that rotate from the attic into the children's uh, bedroom area. Very well done. It was the angles were being covered. The communication was there. MTU can only continue on with this at that 4-2 split. I mean, a a as much as Akron looked like they were absolutely taking this taking this one already, they were storming ahead to four to zero lead. This one, like l like I said, and like you said, Spades, this one has really changed. And now, and now with those two rounds in the bag, Michigan Tech, all they have to do is play the defense on Oregon that they have prepared for. They are here on Oregon. They chose this map because they know exactly how to defend these sites. And we're going to see dorms first rather than basement. Clearly, Dorm's the primary of Michigan Tech's preference, but this is exactly what they're going to need to do, and they've done the work on attack. Job well done. You can check that box, and now you move on and you refocus on how to get this defense going. Of course, Akron, they've got a fierce attack on this map, but if you're Akron as well, your momentum has now been completely stopped by some very aggressive plays from CJ and Chibbles and the like, and now if the onus is on you. You are on attack, you need to get into that site and do the work yourself. And now for MTU, they can sit back, relax, and let Akron walk into their open and loving arms. Yep, no, I'm completely with you. This is the defining moment here for the tempo for the rest of the game. Uh, this very much is in Akron's backyard. They are the ones that have to do something with it. They've just been canceled out two rounds in a row. Yes, they've got four, but they're within two, and the momentum is now sitting on MTU side, and they're on defense. So they literally just got to play their game. They just have to play their positions, play smart, play together, communicate as a team. And Akron's challenge just went from a insurmountable one to an uphill climb all the way up a mountain. Uh, but again, Akron also ready for the challenge. They have the ability. They have the fragging potential. And they have the IQ in the game smarts, if you will, to get this done. So it's just going to come down to uh, who's going to outplay who. As we saw in those first defending rounds, IMAT was huge on the flank. Whether or not MTU is going to try and do something similar, I don't know. Or whether or not they're just going to play more consolidated on site, we'll have to see. So far, it looks like CJ is definitely waiting on the flank here downstairs in that uh, school area as Arv is taking a little bit of a fight here with, I believe it was TK or Chibs. Oh, there we go. We got our first couple there as TK and Boomer both trading off Hennessy. Uh, and that was a good start to this round so far. Well, we saw TK there just having the absolute gall to just sit in front of that wall and go for the bandit trick, even with the floor destroyed below him. Two more picks are going to come out, both Red and Surma hitting the floor. They're going to take him off the board now. Now in a 3v3, still 40 seconds on the clock. This is the time that Akron needs to work with as IMAT has now swung all the way up the top of White Stairs. He does reveal his position with a couple of shots as Arv now takes down Chibbles, who's aggressive, but CJ secures the refrag. It's still IMAT now all the way up in sight. Jetcon gets taken down, but IMAT with the quick answer. So now Jetcon will use the withstand ability, revive himself, but CJ shuts that down, and it's a 1v1 between the two gods themselves, but it's CJ who prevails against I'm at Michigan Tech with their first defensive round win. You know what? It's uh, it's a trade-off. It seems like both, both maps seem to be favoring the opposite team for just a slight second, and then it gets completely turned on its head. MTU coming back, showing that very strong defensive side that we all know and love that they're a playability on this map. Uh, again, on the, uh, the attack, even on the defense when it came to coastline, they seem to have plays in place to try and stop or counter certain pushes. It just didn't seem to roll in their, their favor at the time. But